Hi, this is John Palfrey coming to you from Cambridge, Massachusetts with an update on the Digital Public Library of America as of May 2012. We've been having a very productive time in the DPLA community and I wanted to give a sense of where the project stood and where we're headed in the next 11 months between now and the April 2013 kickoff that's planned for the DPLA. For those of you who were with us in San Francisco last month in April for our West Coast plenary kickoff, we had an amazing time. It was 300 plus people sell out or give away. I suppose it was not charged, but uh, we filled up the uh, capacity at Brewster Kale's amazing internet archive facility. We also had a day before that of the workstream meetings where all the workstreams came together for a day of very intense discussion and I think very productive uh, work together toward uh, planning the DPLA. So we are coming off of a great deal of, uh, of input from the community broadly and starting to take that input and drive towards something that in fact will be a DPLA that people can experience. Um, so I wanted to give a sense of what's on the work plan between now and April 2013 and some of the recent decisions that we've taken. All of these should be uh, easily found on the website or the wiki at dp.la, but this is a concise form of that, I hope. As you may know, the governance of the DPLA planning process is run through the steering committee, and the steering committee gets its recommendations from the work streams, which are entirely open, and we encourage those of you who may not yet be participating to join in to these work streams. And a couple of issues have bubbled up through the work streams to the steering committee, and we've taken some decisions. So three recent decisions that we have taken are to hold uh, a, our meetings pursuant to an open meetings policy, which I think will guide the DPLA uh, organization when that is formed very well, and we'll live by those in the coming year as well. So when we had our steering committee meeting in April uh, um, in San Francisco, that was actually our first open steering committee meeting. A number of people came, and I think it was productive and helpful and, and good to have it, and our steering committee meetings will continue to be open through the course of the planning process. The second decision that we took was to form a 501c3 organization to run the DPLA moving forward, and we're taking uh, initial steps toward that now. We're considering two options. One is to create one from whole cloth, a new 501c3, and then to have that organization be what runs the DPLA. We're also looking to see if there are existing 501c3s that are doing something similar that would be willing to be converted purely over to this process. And we're uh, playing with both uh, of those choices to figure out what would be optimal for the DPLA. The advantage of converting an existing organization is you don't have to wait on the IRS and others to give you the approvals for the tax status and so forth, so it would be quicker out of the gate to convert an organization potentially, but the advantage of a, of a brand new one is that we would have no potential of uh, baggage, as it were, in terms of an existing organization being converted. So that's very much uh, now in the hands of the Secretariat to get that done, and, and we will. So that's the second of the decisions recently taken. And the third is to begin a search for an executive director for the DPLA. This is uh, an organization that has a great future, and we are seeking to have a really terrific person to come out of the cultural heritage or the digitization or the um, uh, public interest community or the business community who has an interest in running a dynamic startup of this sort with a very large uh, public interested focus uh, going forward. So please consider this our first call for executive director candidates. We'll be doing a more formal search in the coming months, but we are very much eager to hear from people as to who would be great to be leading this organization after April 2013. So these are three decisions that we've taken in a formal sense through the DPLA steering committee. This is all, of course, pursuant to the notion that the Berkman Center, which has been uh, incubating and supporting this effort will not be the formal home of the DPLA going forward. That's been our plan all along, and that we'll do an appropriate handoff. A baton will be handed from the Berkman Center team, uh, including myself, to the new uh, executive director and new organization sometime uh, between now and next year, and we hope you know around the April 2013 uh, timeline that will be either complete or clear, clearly in progress, the handing off of the baton. Um, so that's one big chunk of decisions that we've made and uh, steps that we're taking toward April 2013. The other big cluster of things I thought I would put on this short video is the idea of putting together something that is the DPLA in April 2013 that people can experience. 
and we're still having lots of discussions about it, but this is the, the working plan, is that we want a destination where people can come on the web to see what the DPLA may be eventually. So it's a series of gestures, it's not the whole thing, but gestures that will convey what is wonderful about this idea and make it much more concrete for people. So I think it's still a fair critique that we haven't defined clearly enough what the DPLA will be. So part of that is to instantiate it in code and in uh, digitized materials that come from existing uh, collections and also things that may be digitized anew for this project. So as you may know, we have entered into an agreement with Europeana to do an initial uh, exhibit around the topic of migration and immigration, and that's going to be a joint project between our two institutions. This will be on the relatively curated end of the spectrum. In other words, this will be done as an exhibit more than it will be sort of a full collection with an entire run of documents. So it will allow people to look through some materials that professionals have selected for the purpose of demonstrating what kind of collaborations like this could look like. We expect we will have some fuller runs of documents in other areas. In other words, we will have things that look more like uh, full collections digitized, but again, it'll be uh, gestures of that. It's not going to be um, anything uh, absolutely complete. We'd like to have things that uh, refer to different fields of inquiry, so some things that are humanities-focused, some things that are uh, science-focused, some things that take uh, on a different uh, topic in a different way so that people will be able to see um, the, the breadth of what could be covered in a DPLA. And then we'd like to show things in a variety of formats. So this is absolutely going to be about uh, digital books, but it'll also be about, about digital images and moving images and sound files and so forth. So in the initial DPLA instance that we will be rolling out in April 2013, we'll have a series of these types or gestures of things uh, that people can see and do. This is absolutely not going to be a complete DPLA. We're not unveiling the entire uh, project at that point, but we will be unveiling enough, I think, it will make it, A, useful to people, and B, a very clear sense of what a DPLA might be if we really lean into it. Of course, we've got a lot of work to do between now and then. We've had a wonderful uh, contribution from the interim technology development team to set up the platform for that. We're now taking next steps to figure out how to build front ends for, so people can actually uh, use this system. Also, how do we build out that great platform, the back end, which has as you may know, uh, a great deal of open metadata now in it. I think you may have uh, seen the announcement in April about the release of Harvard's 12 million uh, metadata records on an open access basis. We also have millions of records from the Library of Congress and others uh, in this database. So the next steps are to say, how do we continue to build out this back end, which is, I think, a robust and effective open architecture for building in a generative way, while also saying, OK, let's create something that people can actually use in, uh, in about a year. So that's the overall update for the DPLA. The standard message that we've been conveying throughout this project of please come join us and work with us, bring your ideas and your energy. We would uh, love to have uh, a growing community as we have uh, already throughout this process and uh, for this next year as we head toward the April 2013 launch of the DPLA, we encourage uh, people who haven't been involved yet uh, still to continue to get involved. This will succeed if it is something that continues to be a burgeoning and growing and excited community to create something that is bigger than what any one of us, either as individuals or institutions, could do on our own. I'm John Palfrey, and on behalf of the steering committee of the DPLA, the Digital Public Library of America, I'm signing off for now, but look forward to seeing you at events or online for the DPLA. Thanks so much.